Serial killer pleads insanity, but doesn't know the teen victim survived. Oh, shit. He trying to get away with it, bro. I stopped her just like a pig. Because this country is like the mother of all countries. And what happens in the U.S. can change the entire world. So how do you want to change it? With death? With blood? Yes, this is the only way out. What? They want to see blood, and I give them blood. He's acting crazy? This is the railroad killer. He evaded the death penalty for years by pleading to be legally insane. And since his arrest, nobody has been able to prove him wrong. There is something wrong with him, but does it make him any less morally responsible? The FBI was convinced that out of his 23 victims, none survived. 23? Lock that man. What are we even talking about, dude? To commit 23 homicides? What the f are we talking about, dude? Like, what? We're just, oh, no, nah, he's just a little crazy. I don't give a f if he is or not. Throw that motherfucker in prison. Until one did. I'm Holly, and I'm the only known survivor of the railroad serial killer. Mm. Assaulted, beaten, stabbed, and left for dead. 20 year old Holly K. Dunn came face to face with the infamous railroad killer. It was a horror show heads beaten to a pulp, just horrific violence. But instead of succumbing to her injuries, she became the sole survivor out of his 23 alleged victims. Wow. The only one able to stop him. From his perspective, she basically came back from the grave to nail him. Mm. Holly was fresh out of her parents' house in Indiana as she had just left for college with her boyfriend. In late August, 1997, I was a student at the University of Kentucky. It was about the second night of classes. It was a Thursday night, and I went to a party with my boyfriend, Chris Meyer, not far from campus. Later that night, the two decided to leave to take a walk beside the railroad tracks. It is at this point that they came face to face with a shadowy figure. Uh -oh. It was very dark and you couldn't see very well. So it was very startling to see someone come out. I'm that just was saying white people activities, bitch. you're not seeing me do that. No, hell no. Is Kenji not white? Motherfucker, I'm mixed with a little bit of white, but I'm not white enough to go fucking go go walk out walk in the middle of the night on a fucking railroad track. First of all, I'm not going near no railroad track. A train come, I'm gonna die instantly. I just feel like I'm a trip. My shoelace gonna get stuck. Some bullshit gonna happen. My luck, I'm just too clumsy for it. I have an Amish grandma, dude. Okay, that's like the only white person in my fucking family. But word to my mother, word to my, word to, word to my fucking grandma, word to, word to that PA Dutch bitch, word to, word to, we be tur turning butter and I don't, I don't know what else they do, make candles? What the fuck do Amish people do? It was very dark and you couldn't see very well. So it was very startling to see someone come out that was crouched behind an electrical box. The man gave them a menacing look, pulled out a weapon and ran towards them. Oh, and I don't no. remember being hit. I think he thought he had killed me. During the assault, she had to go through much more than just getting knocked out. But what really happened- Dude, I'm not gonna lie to you. Dude, if I'm, let's say I'm out with my girlfriend, right? And and we're in the middle of the night and, and a killer pops out on us. They haven't mentioned what happened to the boyfriend yet, but I, I would probably sacrifice myself so she gets away. But, but I would be hoping and praying she would help me jump him. And, and then if all else fail, you know what? I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm being, I'm gonna be honest with you i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this in real life if it was a zombie apocalypse if it was a person with a knife person with a gun i'm throwing that on the floor and i'm running for my life hey it is what it is boy sometimes i choose me i choose me bitch. i don't care that night would only be revealed years later during her attacker's trial when she eventually woke up her boyfriend wasn't responsive at all oh holly had to leave him there and went to look for help on her own. I was definitely knocked out, but I somehow, at some point, got up to get help. All I could think was go get help. The night of August 29th, 1997, about 2.45 in the morning, uh, we received a call for a female that had been injured. Behind the phone is Chad Getz, another student. He was studying late until a woman covered in blood broke into his house. The screen oh, door wow. was closed. I opened the screen door and walked into this person's house. I was sitting on, sitting in my chair studying and out of the corner of my eye, I just glimpsed something. Her, her face, it, it looked like a boxer whenever they get cut during a boxing match. I, I, I thought she was going to die. There was no doubt. The f is this background noise, dude? Mama. Despite her broken jaw, Holly was still able to speak. After laying down, she told him that her boyfriend was still down by the tracks. And I did keep saying oh, to him, my friend's still out there. I, the, you know, like, be sure they know my friend's still out there.
Yo, okay, first of all, he's saying boyfriend and she's saying friend. I would be mad as f I'm, hey, if, if, if it's a friend on God, I might jump her with him. F that. Yeah, I'm not gonna be no side piece dying for you, bitch, on God, bro. A friend is crazy. You better lie and say I was her husband or something, bitch. How you get friend zoned after you, like, fucking die for someone? There, my friend's still out there. Soon after Chad made the call, the police and paramedics arrived and checked up on Holly. When we walked through the front door, I remember seeing a lot of dry blood on her face and in her hair. Had some deformity to her jaw. We found a puncture wound, I believe, on her neck. She was able to tell us her name was Holly and that she'd been she'd been beaten and she oh. told us she was hurting. She gave the paramedics more details about what happened to her and asked them to leave her and go look for Chris oh instead. Oh my God. She told us that her friend was down the tracks. One of the paramedics that I was with said he would go down there with the police to find this person. The third paramedic came back. He confirmed us that uh, there was a body down there that had been hit in the head with a rock and that he wasn't viable for us to call for another ambulance to transport to the hospital. But he whispered it to me so not to, to let the, the girl know what he had found. So we didn't want to make her situation any worse than it already was. Mm -hmm. At the hospital, Holly kept asking her family about Chris. Everyone was told not to talk to me. I just said, Chris is dead, isn't he? And and my my dad actually is the one that I said that to, and he was like, yes, he, wow. he died. He was charming and so sweet and kind. He was just a great guy wow i'm sorry for being here earlier when chris died i think i felt i didn't understand why i was still alive and why he wasn't and this wasn't the only shocking revelation she had to deal with that night since the police immediately linked the case to more murders at that point four people had been murdered and i was the only survivor the realization wow. that not only chris died but also more people came crashing down as the survivor's guilt she felt was unbearable i started to feel it more as more and more people were being killed it grew bigger you know, all these people were dying by this person, but somehow I lived through it. And why did I live through it? As he kept killing more and more people, investigators started to lose hope. He, he would not stop. And his mode of transportation using the railroads was brilliant because they couldn't be monitored. I mean, there's thousands of trains wow. and millions of miles of tracks all over the United States. Devin Anderson, the state prosecutor, discovered that he was a train hopper with multiple aliases. If you're willing to sleep in a train and you're willing to sleep in a field or you can stay lost for a long time. And I did not think we were ever going to catch him. On the verge of death at the hospital, Holly still wanted to help investigators. And to their surprise, she ended up being extremely helpful to the case. No Even way. Even if she was weakened by her injuries, she took mental notes of everything she could remember about her attacker's appearance. I mean, I was doing things during the attack thinking, I'm going to burn your face into my memory. I'm going to remember every tattoo you have, every scar you have. I'm going to look on every part of your body and I'm going to know everything about you. Mm. Because if I survive this, I'm going to get you. Despite being disfigured and heavily injured, she survived. But it would take a while before she got a chance to call him out. W, bro. After three years and nine more victims, the FBI finally identified the man to be Angel Maturino Resendez, a criminal from Puebla, Mexico, who recently got caught crossing the U.S. border. The Shaking my fucking head. I'm about to get real trumpy in a second, bitch. This is what I talk about. They're bringing... No, no, that's actually insane. That's actually insane. The reason they were able to catch him was because of the tattoos and scars descriptions given by Holly years earlier. Wow. The sketches and general descriptions had been useless so far since he was always changing his appearance after killing someone. Now that they knew his identity, he's a smart they got killer. his sister to persuade him to turn himself in in exchange for a psychological evaluation. But what they didn't know was that he was already planning his defense. Insanity was the logical defense because no one wants to believe that there's someone out there that will do things like that. That was the thing that worried me the most about the case was that jurors would just throw up their hands and say, nobody in their right mind could do what he does. Mr. Resendez, do you please rise? As Holly heard the news about her attacker's arrest, her that traumatizing memories came flooding back. I mean, it was a relief for me. I mean, I was still very scared. This really meant 
I think when he surrendered that I knew that I was going to face him again. After years of pursuit, Prosecutor Anderson finally got to see the man she so far only knew as the railroad killer. You could feel he was dangerous. He was a dangerous person. He looked like a wild animal who had been caught. As Anderson guessed, his defense team planned an insanity defense. If successful, Resendez could be put in an institution and eventually even released into the world. That's but the insane. prosecutor still had one last trick up her sleeve. I flew into Houston with my family mm. the night before I was going to testify. And I woke up during the middle of the night screaming and crying. What I was most worried about, I think, when I testified was seeing him again. Mere minutes before the trial started, Anderson took a minute to talk to the panicked Holly. I went back there and said, okay, are you ready? And she said, yep. And I said, he's going to be in there looking at you. Don't look at him. Just look at me. Don't look at him until I ask you to. She took a second to give her a hug and pointed her towards the doors. I cannot imagine the amount of courage she had to, to marshal to come into that courtroom to walk in and face him. She chose to present Holly as the last testimony of the trial. As the sole survivor, she was her only hope to convince the jury. We're going to tell you about the people. The people who've been murdered, most of whom murdered in their own homes. I knew that I wanted Holly to- Insanity, bro? Let's say you do murder someone, right? If you're like insane and you, you accidentally insane, like out of like an insane fucking crazy- I don't know, dude. Maybe like once you, you'll just start doing it. Like, ah, I'm so crazy. Ah. And then when you murder him, you're like, oh, shit, I kill someone. I'm crazy. Ah. You know what I mean? You don't go out of your way train hopping, having different aliases, changing your appearance every single time you murder someone just to fucking say insane. That's not, that's super planned, bro. Like, what are we talking about? Testify last. So by the time she took the stand, the jury had heard the gruesome details of all the other murders that we had solved at that point. When Jeez. I went into the courtroom, I sat down in the, the chair to testify. I did not look at him. I was looking straight at Devin. As an opener, Anderson asked her a very unusual question. What did you do last weekend? But behind that question was an opportunity to empower her and show to Resendez that she was stronger than him. I was mm. really excited to say I graduated from college. Mm. To me, it, it, I was saying to him, you didn't destroy me. Yeah, Fuck you. This is still, we still got 10 more minutes on this shit? Lock this man up, what the fuck are we talking about? We got more? Finally, Holly was allowed to share her story publicly. As beforehand, it had to be kept secret for the investigation. Then I went into the details of that night. After oh, no. explaining that Resendez first asked for money before forcing them to kneel down in front of him, Holly went to explain the actual assault. Be warned that the following segment may be disturbing. Trigger to some warning, people. chat. He trigger made warning. Chris get down on his knees and started going through Chris's backpack. I thought he was looking for money. But really what he was doing was tying up Chris's hands behind his back with his backpack. Oh. At that point, with the weapon in his hand, I, he took off my belt and he tied my hands behind my back with my belt. Oh, no way. He pulled Chris into the grass beside the tracks. With Resendez's attention focused on Chris, Holly could have ran at any moment. I was not going to leave Chris. You better than me, girl. I'm leaving that motherfucker. I'm, I'm jetting, chat. I'm... Like, stay right there. Okay, don't worry. I'm not going nowhere. That's what you're going. That's my feet steps as soon as you turn around. I remember him ripping a shirt and he tied up my legs. He tied up Chris's legs and then he made gags for us. Chris had said, run if you can. And I couldn't get my legs untied, so I couldn't run. I don't know how much time passed between that time and when our attacker came with the rock. It was like oh, so heavy no. that he was having to like kind of hold it like a baby. And I just remember him coming over to Chris and he just dropped it on his head. And it was a dream. I mean, I didn't really understand what was happening. In her confusion, she heard a loud noise, a sound she had never heard before. What I heard was actually a death rattle. It was his last breath. Oh That's my God. That's what I heard. After the murder, he turned his eyes towards Holly, and from the way he was looking at her, she knew he had something else other than murder on his mind, oh, but no. she was determined to fight him. And then he climbed on top of me, and I knew at that moment he was going to rip me. I tried to kick him, I tried to punch him, and he stabbed me in my neck. Holy and he said, how easily I could kill you. 
And this is the moment it happened. Out of respect for Holly and the other victims of Resendez, we won't be covering much of the assault past this point, but note that afterward, Resendez tried to kill her. My mind completely blacked out. He hit me hard. He was trying to kill me. I laid there and he thought I was dead. I'm, I'm just thinking, I mean, how did this, wow. what, you know, I don't even know what just happened. With this last statement, Holly finished her testimony. The entire courtroom was filled with a mix of disgust, disbelief, and sadness. And at that moment, Anderson looked straight into Holly's eyes. Just, I felt so proud of her for doing it. And she cried. I mean, she was very, you know, emotional, but she told it, she got it out. The jurors were crying, Devin was crying. It was the moment I had been waiting for in the trial because I wanted a victim of his to, to face him down mm. because no one else could. But Anderson wasn't done yet. As she went on to ask her last question to Holly, the question that would finally put an end to the railroad killer's rampage. To her, everything else had been building up to Stupid. this moment. Anderson asked, can you please identify the accused? What is he wearing? And so- You wearing them whack glasses? F out of you four-eyed I see God don't even want you to see. F on my face, stop looking at me with them f eyes. He got that weak polo on, dirty ass bitch, with that nasty ass slick back. F you, my fault. This moment I knew I was gonna have to look at him. So I look at him and I, you know, point to him and I say, he's wearing a white button down shirt. I have never felt such relief in my entire life. And I probably never Dude, I mean, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, chat. Listen, um, I'm thinking, right? Hear me out, this might be a little extreme. This might be a little extreme, maybe. Hey, maybe I'm wrong. You know how they got the death sentence? You know what I mean? And all that. I think if you, if you like R word someone, they should have like a fucking, a big d squad. You know what I mean? And then it's like, you just get d down by them. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck it. you, you wanted to, to do that nasty crime? Well, open your ass because we have six, six big old dicks just for you, buddy. Okay. <laughs> have fun. You know what I mean? I don't know, dude. Eye for an eye? Yeah, and then chop off his peepee -pee and throw it into a bush. Or not even throw it into a bush. Feed it to a dog in front of him. Just thank God. And it was a great moment. It's a great moment because she got to call him out for all those other people sitting in the courtroom and for all those other people who were dead. She got to call him out. It was great. Mm. And as I'm saying that, I feel my hearing going into my head. I get really hot and I feel like I'm about to faint. Even though it was a cathartic moment for Holly, one can only handle that much. You know, I saw him and he had basically a, a emotionless face. I broke down at that point and they had to carry me out of the courtroom. I was so emotionally wow. destroyed. I mean, I, I couldn't give any more than I gave during that No, trial. you did good for After sure. After Holly was carried outside of the courtroom, Anderson addressed the jurors one last time before they finally gave their verdict. There is something wrong with him, but does it make him any less morally responsible? Mm. No. The Talk jury did him. find that him. he was a future danger to society. Duh. So the judge sentenced him to death. F yeah. No! Not death! Let that man rot under the jail! F him! Damn! Fuck! How does death work? Do they instantly die? He needs to be like life in prison and then kill his bitch ass, dude. One surprising fact is how on fast Holly landed back on her feet. Way before the execution, even before the trial itself, she was already trying to help Later, other Deccan. victims. I started speaking about two years after the attack. He said, look how easily I could kill you. To me, it felt like part of my healing process to talk about it and to cry about it and to be emotional because for so long I had to kind of detach emotion from it. The way that I Me personally, me personally, I'm going to be like, listen, judge, y'all know you're going to sentence him to death, but let me do it. Let me do the honors, please. I beg of you, please. And then, and then I'm, I'm standing, he's in an electric chair and I'm standing by the switch and I'm going to be like, look how easily I could kill you and then hit the switch and he just, ah! It's like you die, you know that'd be gangster. Shit. On with my life was I had to forgive him and look for the good that could come from this. I when I was speaking, I didn't have to worry about that. I could work through my emotions, and and that really helped me in my healing process.
being a survivor is mm. one thing, but helping other survivors and knowing how to do that in a professional manner was another thing. And she isn't using the word professional lightly. She literally turned her entire life around with the urge she felt to help other survivors. This is why she decided to found her own advocacy center. What the f*** was that? True for us. You see that? Jesus Christ. You see that? That was my f the first time Chatter goes, take him out back and blow his brains out like we do it in the South. What the f***, buddy? Are you good? Pal, are you good over here? Hey, listen. Hey, hey, um, have a good one now, buddy. Okay, let's relax. Let's tone it the f*** down, buddy. Sir, for victims of violent crimes. I'm good. I'm, I'm saying tone it down like I didn't just recommend having six dudes run a train on this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yo chat <laughs> yo chat i probably made the craziest thing. bro just yo bro came in here and just said hey let's just shoot the motherfucker <laughs> i came up with an elaborate plan to have this man <laughs> have his dick ripped, ripped off and, and then have the girl look in his eyes and do a fucking one-liner before he kills her <laughs> what the fuck dude they opened in 2008 and have already served justice to more than 300 survivors. Holly is a hero because mm. she did not let what happened to her destroy her. She decided to make it her reason to live. She's kind of like an angry bird. My fault. Or her reason to help people. And even if her work today is very impressive, you see it though, her right? internal journey was even more so. She ended up redefining herself. You know no more about? was she a victim. She was now a survivor a survivor is someone who she's a victim kenji no this is that's not the victim that's the lawyer she decided to this is the lawyer i'm talking about bro no more was she a victim she was now a survivor a survivor is someone who gets up each day and lives their life mm. and can choose happiness can choose to smile i think that that's a survivor you don't have to be a person who goes out and does public speaking or writes a book. You get up each day and you put mm. your two feet on the ground and you choose to do something. It's that simple. He attempted to destroy her, but she's the one who came up on top. Today, she wants her story to be heard. For all the voiceless survivors out there, she wants them to know that they survived for a reason. I survived because I wasn't done. Talk to him. I survived to- Cause you gangster, cause you real. Something. That's right. Look at that smile. That killer. That's why he dead. Rest in peace, boy. <laughs> him. And word of my mother, if it fills up to me, this will be going in him repeatedly.